it is devastating enough to have a family member murdered, but to have someone say, well, he was murdered because he sold drugs and he caused his own murder. So because of that, we are not going to help you. You do not deserve it. And how does that feel? There's not a lot of empathy that's mobilized for the young boys and men of color that have been intentionally injured. And that's, that's a problem. When we've applied for victim's compensation for some of our clients or patients, it's a, incredibly disappointing to them when it is denied because they don't have resources. Having a, a contributory conduct clause in our compensation program diminishes the life of the person whose life was lost. And, and not only does it diminish their life, but it further harms the family members. You, you could have somebody who was a law-abiding individual who maybe smoked pot, or who was antagonized or bullied to the point that they threw the first punch. And now they're faced with this denial of benefits that only further shames them, only further harms the family, and doesn't really acknowledge the fact that they are a victim of a violent crime. The Victim Compensation Assistance Program VCAP is intended to help offset the costs incurred by crime victims and their families, who are referred to as co-victims. VCAP covers, among other costs, funeral expenses for homicide victims and the medical expenses of survivors of intentional injury. Zion was my son's son, and Zion, at uh, death, he was 18. I took him to all his games, I paid for him to go to special camps, football camps and uh, wrestling seminar. He wasn't a guy out there in the street just being boisterous. He was to himself a lot. The night design got killed, we were watching the championship game. The game would be halftime, and uh, Zion said, I'll be back. I never seen him again. Oh, I didn't find out what happened to that next day. I seen on the 12 o'clock news that there was a shooting in Yaden. I got, started getting worried. And about 10 minutes later, I was knocking on the back door. Two men were there with a picture of Zion. They wanted me to identify him. I don't want to exaggerate, about four or five school bus loads of kids came out to Zion's room. Emir is every murder is real. It's an acronym for E-M, E-M-I-R, Emir. They, they're the ones who put me in touch with the compensation, how to apply for compensation, to be reimbursed for my expenses for the funeral. Based on the laws of Pennsylvania, I, did, I never even knew anything about it until uh, the representatives of Emir directed me in that manner and uh, gave me the forms and showed me how to fill this out. The Emir Healing Center is a place where families who have been affected by homicide can come and receive services like counseling and support groups. And also, EMIR, E-M-I-R, stands for Every Murder is Real, but it's also my son who was murdered March 26, 1997. At the EMIR Healing Center, there is no judgment. It does not matter what happened why the situation is that your child or loved one was murdered and his life or her life is valuable. Most parents are not expecting to bury their child. They're expecting to have an insurance policy on them for their child to bury them. So when that changes, the victim's compensation steps in and say, listen, I'm gonna give you a little relief. They could never fool the financial loss that you have but can they give you a little relief as you start to put the pieces together?
Pennsylvania denies VCAP aid to victims who contribute or are suspected of contributing to their own death or injury. The bar presently extends to expenses paid for the funerals of homicide victims who are found or profiled to fall under the contributory conduct exclusion. The most common reason for victim compensation applications being denied is that the person, the person that has been murdered, has caused their own demise. Causing your own demise means that you were involved in some criminal activity or you started a fight or you even uh, tried to break up a fight and you were murdered. It is devastating enough to have a family member murdered, but to have someone say, he was murdered because he sold drugs and he caused his own murder. It's a way to punish the family. I was already hurt and angry because of what happened, but then to find out that the police report they come in saying that Zion was a drug dealer. That really got to me. And to find out that Zion got shot in the back, going away, you know, how could he be involved in something? Paying Zion's funeral expenses has nothing to do with drugs. And you know, that should never even come up. Maybe that should have come up in the, when they get got a suspect and the, somebody's on trial. But Zion ain't no trial yet. I don't think any of these compensation decisions should lie solely in the hands of a law enforcement questionnaire. And that's basically the way the process is now. You have the victim who files their claim and or the victim advocate who files a claim on their behalf. And then PCCD waits for this questionnaire that is required to be filled out by the police department. I think it's problematic to only rely solely on what is on that questionnaire. I think that the compensation program needs to and can look at the entire case as a whole. They can seek additional information, they can talk to the victim advocate, they can talk to the prosecutor. They, you know, there, there are definitely other sources of information that could help um, with a much more holistic decision making as opposed to a box on a questionnaire that a police officer may or may not check. I believe the contributory conduct clause disproportionately affects uh, people of color. It disproportionately affects individuals who are living in urban settings, and it disproportionately impacts African-American individuals, predominantly at the, the families of African-American males, if we're looking statistically at our homicide rate across the Commonwealth. And that's unfair. When we're talking about homicide cases, that's where I believe there should be a complete and utter abolishment of contributory conduct. I don't think it's a family member's responsibility to have to bear the burden of another family member's choice. So when your application is denied a victim's compensation, you have enti you're entitled to an appeal. And the great thing is that we assist families through the appeal process. We're strong advocates of them having the strength to fight because they should be heard. And fortunately, we had a, a grandfather who was willing to go all the way. And fortunately, I was able to get a lawyer. For Mr. Vaughn, it was not the money. Mr. Vaughn retired from Boeing. Mr. Vaughn didn't need the money. They, they said his grandson was a drug dealer. That was what Mr. Vaughn wanted cleared more than anything. And the detective that said this, they never gave Mr. Vaughn any proof. It was just his word. So his issue was clearing my grandson's name. Victoria called me up one day and she said, look, I'm very frustrated. I uh, have tried to uh, find people to look into this matter and I can't find anybody and I thought of you and here I'm calling you. So when I looked into it, the more I looked into it, the more it seemed that it was an unjust decision that this person was involved in criminal activity and contributed to his own death.
after at least two denials, they granted me a hearing on October the 4th, 2017. The hearing officer, they found that the accusations against Zion were not well founded. You know, they have no proof. They haven't presented any truth, so they overturned it. There seems to be some blurring of the lines as to who gets approved and who doesn't. Because if there's a question as to whether or not a person has been um, involved in a violent act where they're harming someone, you're not, you're not sure unless an investigation has happened. And, and I'm not absolutely sure the investigations go on as quickly or as diligently as they could be. Folks that have been hurt are deserving of support, and if those supports aren't already in place, then we look to society for, for some assistance. In those cases where there's an individual who clearly is not uh, engaging in harmful behavior towards another person, um, that they would say, you know, this person is a victim of crime. Um, nobody has the right to be shot. Nobody has the right to be beaten to, to the point that they require medical assistance and counseling. And so I would hope that the compensation program would look at those cases and say, these individuals need help. And that's what our program is here to do, is to help people. When we're talking about counseling and medical benefits, uh, that's a no-brainer to me. And I don't think anyone should be denied that. For me, every murder is real means it doesn't matter the race, it doesn't matter the uh, status, the money this person might have had or didn't have, that this person is was a human being and they had hopes and dreams that will never be realized. They have mothers and fathers, sisters and brothers and friends that love them, love them, and they should be respected as such. The producers and directors wish to thank Soul Shot, Portraits of Victims of Gun Violence, for permission to use images created for its project, which links fine artists with the families or friends of victims of gun violence. The artists meet with the victims' loved ones to learn about the lives they've lived. The goal is to present diverse works that in some way convey graphically or through narrative the essence of the person being portrayed. Their mission is to bring attention to and memorialize the lives lost and tragically altered due to gun violence in the belief that portraits have the unique ability to call out the souls and profoundly affect those who see them. Our appreciation extends to Laura Madeline, who facilitated our collaboration with Soul Shot, the loved ones of the subjects portrayed, and the artists. Thank you.